Good morning, everybody. We want to welcome you to Fight the Good Fight Ministries. And we want you to know that here at Fight the Good Fight Ministries, we do ministry as a team. Tonight, my wife, Shannon, Pastor Shannon, will be bringing forth the message. And I know the Lord has stirred her heart up. Um, it's important for her to do this message, obviously. She wasn't feeling very well yesterday or last night, and I was preparing myself to do the message. But... Uh, Praise the God, praise the Lord that uh, she is feeling better. She's going to do the message. So I'm just here. My name is Pastor Victor Ortiz, uh, the head pastor at Fight the Good Fight Ministries. And my wife is the co-pastor. So we are going to open up in prayer. We want to welcome you all here. And uh, we hope you enjoy the message. So let's bow our heads and go to the Father. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, God, for this day that you've given us. You, the word says that this is the day you have made and we should all rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you for the word that you've been stored and written in the tablets of my wife's heart to bring forth to your people, Father God. We thank you, God, that we're able to come together today, God, and, and fellowship and worship and, and bring honor and glory to your name, Father, because you see us worthy, Father. We thank you, God, that you're not done with us yet, God, that we're still under reconstruction and we're still moving on your behalf, Father. So, Lord, continue to use us in any capacity that you see fit, Father. Bless my wife, anoint her, anoint her lips for the word that's coming out of her mouth, Father God, that would be orchestrated and guided by you, God. We thank you for the message of the word. Let it bring forth healing, love, and hope for the lost, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'd like to say good morning to all of you. And uh, it's, been, it's been a weekend. Uh, yesterday, my husband and I had done a funeral. And uh, it was actually a, a young lady that we had met uh, some years ago at a church here locally. And she had asked us to perform the funeral, which my husband did. And uh, I just wanted to um, put a shout out to my husband. Um, even though there were some things going on uh, within the family and um, some other things that were surrounding us, my husband went forth and did what he was asked to do. He did a fantastic job and um, I just have to give glory to God and thank God that my husband pushed through and uh, it was just a, a wonderful service and I just wanted to thank my husband for that. So getting into our message today, the title of my message is, I am here to bring hope. So if any of you are taking notes today, this would be a message that you would want to take notes. So let's start off with, I know that there are a lot of you out there that are feeling hopeless. There's actually more than 79,000 people alone here in Nevada that are unemployed. And that alone, when we think about 79,000 people being unemployed, that right there, we feel hopeless. And it seems hopeless that nobody can get through to the unemployment office. Nobody can file a claim online, nor can they pick up the phone and get through to unemployment. That seems hopeless. It seems hopeless that you have no income coming in. It seems hopeless that you can't pay your rent. It seems hopeless that you can't make your car payment. You can't make your insurance payment or maybe even your electric bill, which we know that most of us have been turning on our air conditioning lately because it's been hot. But it does seem hopeless that there is no income to take care of these day-to-day -day necessities. But I'm here to tell you that there is hope. There is hope for each and every one of you that is watching. There is hope. Let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11. And I am reading from the New Living Testament. For I know the plans that I have 
for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope and give you a future. Amen to that? Amen. Amen. Let me say that second part again. Plans to prosper you and not harm you. Plans to give you hope Hallelujah. and a future. Glory. Amen to that? Amen, amen. amen. So if the Lord's saying, for I know I have the plans, declares the Lord. He is the one in charge. He has the plans for our life. Right, folks? Right. He has the plans for our lives and our future. And he doesn't want to harm any of us. He wants to give us hope. And so I'm here to tell you this morning, there is hope for each and every one of you. There is hope. Let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And I will read it from my version. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen to that? Amen. Amen. So that we may overflow with hope. He wants each and every one of us to have hope. Not just a little bit of hope, but he wants us to overflow with hope. So I know that there are some things going on out there in this world with this COVID. And even if COVID-19 wasn't happening right now, we know that there are things going on in people's lives. And sometimes people do get hopeless. They feel they have no hope. Whether it be their marriage is crumbling, whether it be they lost a loved one, maybe they lost a child. Maybe they are so depressed that they feel like committing suicide. I'm here to tell you that there is hope. There is hope Hallelujah. in God. There Hallelujah. is hope in Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. Hallelujah. We all hope for something. Do we not? Amen. We all hope for something. And there is nothing wrong with hoping for things. But I'm going to tell each and every one of you, and those of you that are watching online, that as Christians, we should be hoping for something far greater than what we see in the world, than material things. We should be hoping for something far greater greater than what we see here on earth far greater here with our heavenly father amen? amen now let's take a look i have three points so if those of you that are taking notes take your pen and pad out right now because i want to give you three points i want you to take a look i want you to use this as homework and as reference and go back to it and study this. Let's take a look at three points. The first point I want to share is what is hope? What is hope? Hope is something that has a feeling of a confident expectation, right? Each and every one of us here in this room and those that are watching online, you have hoped for something. Maybe you're hoping for a job. Maybe you're hoping for a husband. Maybe you're hoping for a wife. Maybe you're hoping for a child. You are hoping for something. And it's a feeling of a confident expectation. Number two, when. When should we have hope? When should we have hope? I want to go to Psalms. 131 verse 3 it says let Israel hope in the Lord 
That's where our hope should be. It should be in the Lord. Our hope shouldn't be in a job. Our hope shouldn't be in a man. Our hope shouldn't be in a woman. Our hope shouldn't be in our bank account. Our hope should be in the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now this verse here is speaking. It is speaking to Israel. But it can also be speaking to us as well. You all agree? Yes. Amen? Amen. And point number three, where? Where should our hope be? Where should our really? hope be, folks? Our hope should be in God and God's word. Let me say that again. Your hope, my hope, should be in God and in God's word. I want us all to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17. It says this, Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Let me tell you something, folks. Our hope and trust should not be in our money and our bank account. It should not be. Our trust and hope needs to be in God. And his word says it right here. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. You can have a huge bank account one day. And in 24 hours, that bank account and all that money could be gone. It's unreliable. So don't put your hope there. Let's continue reading. It says, their trust, all of us, there is us. Their trust should be in God. Amen? Amen. Their trust should be in God. Amen. Amen. Who richly, it says, he richly gives us all that we need for our enjoyment. Hallelujah. So he richly gives to us. We don't need to worry. We just need to put our hope in God and give it to him and know that our hope is in God and know that that is where our riches should be in the greater one. Amen. Amen. So in closing, <clears throat> I want to read to you Romans chapter 12, verse 12. And before I read that, I want to remind each and every one of you, continue to put your hope no matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what trials you're facing, no matter what you're going through, no matter what mountains you're climbing, no matter what, I'm here to tell you that there is hope. Now in closing, Romans 12:12 12, 12 says this, rejoice in our confident hope. Rejoice in our confident hope hope. Be patient in trouble. Be patient in trouble. And keep on praying. Keep on praying. Rejoice in our confident hope. What is that confident hope? That confident hope is our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who will give you exactly what you need. Yes, amen. So for those of you that are watching and you need prayer, please contact us. Contact us at fightthegoodfightministries.com. You can also catch us on Facebook, Fight the Good Fight Ministries. Please contact us. Put your hope in us. Make sure you give us a thumbs up, a like, and a subscribe. And I look forward to hearing from you. God bless.
Thank you for tuning in.